I just walked into Micro Center and walked out with this laptop for $79, brand new. And today we're gonna see how hackable this thing is and see if we can have more than $79 worth of fun and install Haiku on it. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy going to great lengths to have fun with bargain basement hardware, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. I've been making a lot of videos about Haiku lately, everyone's favorite BOS inspired operating system, but I've always shown it off on old hardware like old ThinkPads. But I got to thinking, if I'm really trying to say that Haiku is daily drivable these days, wouldn't it be fun to go out and find the cheapest possible brand new laptop and see if I could just install Haiku on it? So I ran down to my local micro center where this concept took on a bit of an unexpected twist because I was shocked to find that the cheapest brand new laptop was $79 for this, an 11.6 inch Evolve 3 Maestro. It has a quad core Celeron N3450 at 1.1 gigahertz, four gigs of DDR4 RAM, Intel HD 500 graphics, and Windows 10, which I immediately overwrote with Ubuntu. For $79, that's way less than you'd pay for a Raspberry Pi 4 starter kit. I don't even wanna know the supply chain horrors that let Evolve sell this thing for $79 and still make a profit. But what I do want to know is, for the budget conscious operating system enthusiast, is this tiny, cheap computer a good platform and a good deal if you want to mess around with alternative operating systems on something other than your main PC? Right after this quick word about today's sponsor, Bespoke Post. Now, I know I don't really look like it, but I really quite like the outdoors. So I was really excited to have the opportunity to work with Bespoke Post, who are a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome top shelf goods from under the radar brands, including some stuff that I really like, just all around high quality stuff. Every month you get cool new products based on a preference quiz that you filled out. It's free to join and you can even skip a month plus cancel at any time. 90% of the products come from small brands and many of them are based right here in the US. There's a new membership program with great deals year round, 30% off or more sometimes. Plus you can even preview your member shipment before it's sent. My switchback box came with a ton of great stuff for camping, foldable shovel, military compass, Swedish made Morek Neve knife, plus a fire starter. And I got the Weekender box with this absolutely beautiful travel bag that I'm definitely gonna stuff full of laptops when I go out to VCF SoCal this month. To get a free mystery gift with your first membership purchase, click the link down in the description and enter Action Gift at checkout or go to bespokepost.com slash action gift. So I am just shocked that you can walk into a retail store and buy a full Intel powered laptop for $80. And I mean, yeah, the laptop itself is sort of terrible, but for the price, you really can't complain. I mean, it has USB 3 mini HDMI out, which I think I have a cable for. It has a SIM card slot because this thing has a cellular modem, micro SD card slot and USB 2 and headphone jack. Pretty nice. And uh, yeah, the build quality is not as bad as you might expect. Now you'll notice that I installed Ubuntu on here and the reason I did that is because I wanted to get a baseline of what works and what doesn't work outside of Windows. Audio works, screen brightness works, Wi-Fi works, the mobile broadband is detected. The pre-installed Firefox seems to work just fine. If we try to watch a YouTube video, can we play HD video? Oh, I'd help if I was on Wi-Fi. Well, it seems like there is no sound for some reason. All right, let's put this into 1080p HD. Yeah, it plays pretty nice, but no audio. All right, and you know me, of course we have to try Minecraft on here. Oh boy, the frame rate is not good. <laughs> uh, this is Minecraft 1.20. Let's install Haiku. I believe delete gets us into BIOS, yep. 
And one thing to note about this BIOS is that absolutely every option is available. You can overclock this, turn off all kinds of safety stuff. I mean, <laughs> pretty wild how much stuff is enabled to tinker with on here. But yeah, we're going to move the USB disc up here. Save and exit. And we are booting Haiku just like that. And it got to the live desktop very quickly, just a couple of seconds. And uh, yeah, oh. First problem, trackpad doesn't work. <laughs> All right, external mouse does work. So it looks like hamster mouse to the rescue. Let's see what else doesn't work. Doesn't see the Wi-Fi. All right. Uh, how about audio? Also does not see the audio. Uh, uh oh. Haiku does not see the EMMC storage. Uh. Hold, please. Okay, so after doing a bit of research, this thing does have a bit of a trick. It's unfortunate that Haiku can't see the built-in eMMC storage, but I think there's another option. We're gonna have to take this thing apart, which, hey, I was gonna do anyway, so yeah, let's see if we can actually do what I think we can do. Aha, uh -huh. all right, and here we are, big old battery, two speakers, heat sink, slightly warm. But the most interesting thing is this. That is the cellular modem, which we don't need. And taking that out gives us the only M.2 slot in here, which we're gonna swap in this Dogfish SSD. Now I read about this hack online. Actually, it seems this particular cheap laptop is kind of popular with ham radio enthusiasts because it's a very inexpensive way to run some of the software that they need. So this should work. We should just be able to install on here. That is if Haiku can see it, which that's the thing I'm not sure about, but we're gonna find out. All right, booted back off the USB. Let's go to drive setup. Yes, it sees it. 119.24 <laughs> gigs, awesome. So since this laptop uses EFI, we have to do a little extra to get it booting properly. First, we have to do a GUID or GPT partition map. So we'll initialize the disk as such. And then we need to create two partitions. One of them is gonna be EFI system data, which we'll call EFI boot and make it 64 megs. And then the rest of the disk can be the B file system. The 64 megabyte file system should be FAT32. And then the B partition will be the B file system. Now we can close drive setup and do our install. We'll install to the Haiku partition, which takes literally no time at all. Just look how fast this installer is. That's wild. Once that's done, just a little more to do. We have to mount the EFI boot partition as read write EFI. Then in that folder, we'll make another folder called boot. And then in there, we just have to move a file that Haiku makes pretty easy to get under system data platform loaders, haiku loader.efi. And we just need to rename that to boot x64.efi, all caps. There we go. And that should be good. And I will, of course, link the instructions that I just followed to do that down in the description because they are in the Haiku documentation. All right, and check it out. There it is. UEFI OS on that SSD. <laughs> we can boot from it.
Oh, here we are. Our fresh native install of Haiku on the $79 Evolve laptop. And now it's not perfect, of course. We have to use an external mouse. The trackpad doesn't work. And Wi-Fi doesn't work, but I have a solution for that. TP-Link tiny Wi-Fi dongle. I believe this should work. Oh yeah, we have Wi-Fi. All right, we'll let Haiku update and then have some fun. Now there's a bunch of cool stuff installed by default with the nightly images of Haiku. You know, the famous Pulse CPU Activity Monitor, GL Teapot, of course. Running pretty well here. Gonna add some new teapots and get that frame rate down. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, Haiku Depot is where all the magic happens. And by magic, I mean downloading software. And first thing we'll get, of course, is the Falcon web browser. And while we're in here, might as well pick up Classic Cube. Because I'm pretty sure Minecraft will run on here, but run terribly. All right, speaking of Minecraft, let's go to haikuware.ru and get the custom Minecraft installer, which will let us download both the Minecraft assets and the hacked version of uh, the Java libraries that we'll need to run it. All right, let's start with Classic Cube because Classic Cube is amazing and will run on darn tootin' just about anything. Full screen here. Frame rate is much less than Ubuntu. 10 frames per second, and of course, do wish there was sound. Let's give Minecraft proper a shot. Now it's trying. All right, well, the uh, splash screen is pretty impressive. Does not want to go into full screen mode though. All right, well, Minecraft is uh, running to call this frames per second would be a bit of an overstatement. But this is just impressive that it works at all. Uh, glorious Java. And finally, might as well give YouTube a shot here in Falcon and see how well that Mac 84 video plays. All right, we'll put this into 1080p. It does not play as well as it did in Ubuntu. 720p looks pretty reasonable. Of course, I do wish there was working sound and I bet somebody smarter than me could get it working. Okay, so I know some stuff didn't work out of the box, but what I find really impressive is that I was able to just go into a store, buy the absolute dirt cheapest laptop without thinking about what kind of specs it had or hardware compatibility, and I just installed Haiku on it with hardly any fuss, and it works. It boots up fast, it's totally usable. I mean, sure, external mouse, external Wi-Fi dongle, but still, working Haiku install natively on this machine. So I really want to find a computer that has everything internally working and can run Haiku but is brand new and really try to daily drive it. But as far as this thing goes, I have some other ideas of wacky stuff we can do, like I wonder if this thing can boot Mac OS. In any event, I'll link to this thing on Micro Center down in the description Hopefully they're still selling them for 80 bucks because that's a heck of a deal. But that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman 1, Alex Hoffman 2, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Out Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Eric Shields, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George F. Rosansky, Greg from Prep Game Mods, James Fryman, James Laurie, Jason Papaz, Jason Zell, Camille Rakowski, Lyle Truid, Matthew Crowall, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Tom Woodfin, 
Unknown Soldier 41, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.